Hello, welcome attendees. Thank you for joining us today at the Virtual College Exploration for all Pennsylvania students. Um, just to let you know um, that if you want, if you are looking to ask any questions, you can pop them in the Q and A, um, and they will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Your camera and microphone are off, so you are muted. So the panelists cannot hear or see you. So if you wish to communicate, please communicate via the Q and A. And you can sign up for many more sessions at the PACAC website. If you wish to see this uh, session again, you can always check out the recording um, at the PACAC website, which will be available in the coming days. So without further ado, I will pass you over to Ryan from Hood College, who will kick off the presentation. Thank you, Ryan. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, so as um, as she said, I, my name is Ryan. I am one of the admission counselors here at Hood College. Um, we're located in Frederick, Maryland, so about an hour north of Washington, D.C., um, and then about an hour west of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I have a brief presentation for you, um, and it, it kind of goes over a, a very broad um, view of, of Hood, um, some of our programs, some of our academic offerings, um, you know, extracurricular activities, athletics, all of that stuff. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, any questions throughout, feel free to put those in the Q&A. Um, and I will be happy to answer those um, either you know, to the group or privately, um, depending on what questions you have. Um, and then there's also going to be contact information from me at the end of the presentation. So if you do want to reach out, you can feel free to do so. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen here and share this presentation. All right. So. Um, this presentation starts off with a little bit of uh, history, um, background information about Hood. So in our um, overall community, we were founded in 1893 as the Women's College of Frederick. So we were an all-female school um, until about the early 1970s, then men were allowed to commute to campus. Um, and then we went fully co-ed in 2003. So we have not been co-ed for that long, um, but even then we, we do have a pretty um, you know, standard male to female ratio on campus. It's about 60% female, 40% male. Um, with that, you know, we, we, since the founding of Hood, we've been a very small institution. Um, we think that our students take pride in that. You know, there's a lot of opportunities that we have as a small school that students have access to. So, Currently, we are home to about 1,100 undergraduate students and about 1,000 graduate students here on campus. Um, students come from all across the country, all across the world, so we have a very diverse student population, um, even just being the small size that we are. So it's a very kind of melting pot community here on campus. Um, with the small school environment, you're going to have small classes. So our average class size at Hood uh, hovers around 15 students. Um, obviously, that depends on major program of study or the classes that you're taking, but on average, it's about 15. Um, I am a Hood alum, so I graduated from Hood in 2016. Um, and when I graduated, uh, the largest class I had taken at Hood was around 30 to 35 students. And the smallest class I ever took was about six. So you really have that wide variety of, of options on campus. Um, there's classes where you know, your professors are gonna know, you know if you're, you're not there. Um, your professors will have a lot more you know, community-based instruction and discussion um, in the classroom. So you're learning from your peers, you're learning from other students in the classes and from your professors as well. Um, and that's one of the things that students really enjoy you're getting to know your professors in multiple class settings. So they know you not just as a student from their class, but as a student at Hood in general. You know, they see you in the dining hall, they see you at athletic events or, you know, in clubs and organizations. They, they know what you're interested in, what you're passionate about. And so when it comes time for graduation, if you, you know, have those specific, um, opportunities for employment or for graduate school and you need a letter of recommendation um, or a reference on your resume, these professors serve as really great resources for that. Um, so building very personal relationships with your professors here on campus, they want to see you be successful. They want to give you the opportunities to you know, have the tools to go on after you graduate and get a successful job and start building your career. And then on here. One second. Oops. So this is a view of our campus here. Um, 
pretty much everything that you see here is the entire campus. It's about 50 acres. It is not a huge campus at all. Um, we do have a, a unique campus layout that is very convenient for our students that live on campus. So the campus itself is kind of divided into thirds. So this front portion on campus here, if you can see my, my cursor, um, everything in front of this four columned building is about, um, is pretty much academic in, in nature. So a lot of your classes, your the library, all of your student services, your academic services on campus, those are gonna be in that front third of campus. In the middle here, you can see this kind of horseshoe shape. This is uh, all of our residence halls on campus. So there's currently six residence halls that we have on campus, and those are all located smack dab in the middle of campus. So you are about a five minute walk from your classes. You're about a three minute walk from the dining hall, about three minute walk from any athletic events and things like that. Um, all of our athletic facilities are in the back of campus here in that back third. So you're very conveniently located as a resident student, um, and you don't have to worry about you know, driving to get to class or taking a shuttle to get across campus to get to class because it takes about 10 minutes to walk from one end of campus to the other as it is. Um, so you're very easily able to get around. You're very easily, you know, connected with other students on campus. And that's part of why we have such a broad campus community. Um, we are also located right by downtown Frederick. So about three blocks away from campus, there's a ton of opportunities for students to have access to shops and restaurants and a lot of things like that. It's a very historic area. Um, it's the downtown area itself is very kind of shop local, um, small businesses, family owned and operated businesses and things like that. So students really are, are able to take advantage of that. I say to students all the time, you know, regardless of where you go to college, it's nice to be able to have somewhere to get off campus if you're ever feeling like you need to get off. Um, so, so you're not, you know, you don't feel like you're trapped on campus. You don't feel like you have to be there. Um, obviously, there's tons of events and things happening on campus that keep students around. Um, but for if you want to, you know, take a break, go to the coffee shop downtown and go get your homework done, you're able to do that within, you know, a 10 minute walk. Um, so there's a lot right around campus if you want to have access to that. Um, you know, conversely, if you want to bring a vehicle to campus to be able to get off campus a little bit farther to go to Washington DC, which is about an hour from us, like I said, and, and Baltimore an hour for a day trip or something like that. Um, freshmen are able to have cars on campus here at Hood, so you're able to bring those free of charge. Um, you don't have to pay any registration fees or anything like that. Um, so that's something that's very convenient for our students on campus that do you know, live not too far away. So if you need to go home over a long weekend or anything like that, you're able to bring your vehicle to campus to have access to that. Um, so that is something that is convenient for our students. So here is a listing of all of our majors, all of our programs of study, um, things like that on, on campus. We have over 30 majors that students can participate in. So as a student here at Hood, um, some of our more popular majors I will highlight. And then I'll also talk a little bit about some of our programs that we uh, just added recently. So if you have questions about specific programs or anything like that, you can feel free to put those in the Q&A and I'd be happy to, to answer those. Um, but our largest programs on campus, biology is very popular with students. Um, business administration is one of our larger majors on campus. The education department as a whole is, is pretty, pretty broad. Um, so we have several levels of our education program. We have elementary education um, and special education. Those are combined into one major. We have early childhood education, and then we also have secondary education. So depending on what area of education you want to teach in, um, that'll you know, depend on what major you end up falling into. Um, but that program as a whole is pretty popular with students. Um, we have a nursing program, and that is something that is you know, highly, highly competitive here on campus. So a lot of students are interested in our nursing program. Um, and then the last large major on campus is psychology. Um, very popular with students. Obviously it it's, fits very well with a lot of other majors. So we have a lot of students that will do double majors or a major and a minor here on campus just based on things that they're interested in, things that they're passionate about and wanna pursue. Um, so our students have the opportunity to kind of mix and match majors to get where they want to go, depending on what that looks like. Um, so psychology fits really well with a lot of different majors here on campus. In terms of some of the newer programs that we're offering, um, we just introduced this past year an art therapy major. Um, so for students that are interested in art therapy, we do have a program for that. Um, we also just introduced a public health major. So 
no better time to be introducing a public health major than in, in a pandemic, right? So um, we, we do have students that are very interested in that and learning more about public health and how to you know, deal with situations like the one we have going on right now. Um, and then we also just introduced a, a sustainability studies major, which is a tongue twister and a half, but it is a new major here on campus for students that might be interested in environmental science and policy or you know, conservationism and things like that. It, it's a really great program um, for students that are looking for you know, different laws and you know, policies that we can enact in order to be more sustainable as a society. So that's uh, what we introduced you know, recently. Um, we're also looking to continue expanding different programs here at the college. So adding majors like a finance major and different concentrations within our business program. Um, those are on the horizon for us as well. So we're continuing to grow our majors based on student interest and areas that, you know, a lot of students are um, wishing to go into after they graduate. So we're, we're continuing to grow, continuing to develop, but here's a listing of what we do currently offer here on campus. Okay, so moving on to extracurricular activities. Um, it is very easy to get involved here at Hood. Um, we have over 50 clubs and organizations that students can be a part of. So um, they vary in you know, areas of, of uh, exploration and interest. Um, you can see here, there's kind of, they're broken up into groups here. Um, so a lot of students are very interested in community service here at Hood. It's one of the things that I think uh, we pride ourselves on as a campus community, giving back to the Frederick area. We have a great relationship with Frederick and we do a lot in partnership with them and they give a lot to our campus. So we give a lot back you know, through community service and things like that. Um, we get a lot of very well-rounded students that are successful in the classroom, but are also very involved in their high schools. And so they want to continue being involved at the college level. Um, so we have a lot of students that will continue to start organizations on campus and doing things that they were interested in in high school. Um, continuing that through college is something that's important to them and we're happy to accommodate those students. Um, so because of that, we have over 50 club and clubs and organizations and that number continues to grow every year. Um, if you want to be involved in our community service organizations or some of our diversity organizations, those are very popular here on campus. As I mentioned, we have a very diverse student body. Um, so that's something that is really reflected through those organizations that we have on campus. Um, student government, that's something that's popular with, with students. Um, if the, the media and publications, so being involved in our broadcast studio or having a radio station or um, you know doing our, our newspaper or being a part of our literary magazine, you can do all of that. If you wanna be in our student musical theater or our improv troupe or different ensembles or choirs on campus, you can do those as well. Um, special interest really varies based on the student. You know, there's uh, clubs that were started in the past couple of years. We started a ping pong club, a uh, knitting club, um, and a club that does modeling and etiquette. So they hold fashion shows and things like that for students as well. So. There's a, a really wide variety of um, organizations that students can get involved in. Um, and as I mentioned, if there is something that you currently do in high school that you wanna continue doing in college or something that you find that you're passionate about that you want to pursue in college and we don't offer it currently, it is very easy to start those organizations here on campus. Um, you know, All you need is pretty much signatures from students that say that they're interested and then you are you know, pretty much set. You have an advisor and the student government will approve your organization right then and there. Um, as I mentioned, you know, every year, the, the number of organizations that we offer on campus continues to grow and develop. And I think that's something that contributes to the, the campus culture. You know, we want students to be comfortable on campus. We want them to be involved and be active in the campus community. Um, and so a lot of times students will take those opportunities to get involved. Um, I always say at a school like Hood, um, where we are a small institution, um, it's that you have the same opportunities that you do as you do at any other institution, whether it's large or small. Um, but at a school like Hood, you're more of a big fish in a small pond. Um, as I mentioned, I went to Hood. I graduated from Hood in 2016. And when I was a student in high school, I was very shy, very quiet, um, not super involved in a lot of clubs on campus in my high school. Um, but then when I got to college, uh, it really kind of helped me get out of my shell. 
um, obviously now I, I do this for a living, so I talk to people all the time. Um, and, and you're able to get involved in things like student government, giving tours at campus, um, you know, different ensembles on campus or different musical productions or, you know, things that might be much more competitive at a larger institution. You're able to do that at Hood with far fewer other people competing for the same spot. Um, so a lot of students are able to take advantage of those opportunities and make your four years at Hood what you want them to look like. Um, so I think that that's something that's really important for our students on campus is, you know, being able to be involved and have those experiences that you would at a huge institution, um, but being able to do that on a smaller scale. Um, and that extends into the academic realm as well. You know, students are able to work alongside professors over the summer doing research or you know, writing a paper or doing some kind of journal uh, work and, and getting published by the time they graduate. Um, we have a number of students that are published authors in journals because of studies that they've done alongside professors by the time they graduate. So they haven't even graduated college and they're published authors. Um, obviously that carries a ton of weight on your resume, regardless of what you're interested in majoring in. Um, but it also gives students really great work experience with professionals in the field. Um, our students have those opportunities. They're able to get really close with their, the faculty members that they're working with um, and you know, going off to conferences across the country and presenting their research and presenting what they've done alongside the professor. Um, that's a really great experience for our students as well. So you know, that ease of, of access really extends past clubs and organizations on campus. It goes to research opportunities and job opportunities and different internships all across campus as well. Um, so, when this slide says it's easy to get involved at Hood, it, it's definitely easy to get involved at Hood. Um, the bottom portion of the slide here mentions events on campus. Um, so there are tons of events put on, whether it's by our campus activities board or by different clubs and organizations on campus. Um, every event, you know, it averages out to 500 events a year, um, which, you know, it, it's around two and a half events every single day on campus. Um, so because of that, it's very hard to be bored here, here on campus. Um, there's always something going on. There's always something to be doing, whether it's an athletic event or an outdoor festival on our quad or an organization's ho hosting a, you know, an event on campus, a carnival or something like that. Um, there's tons of opportunities to, to get active and get acclimated with the Hood community. Um, so there's things like Blazer Bingo, where students can win TVs and Nintendo Switches and iPads and all these, you know, really great prizes just by coming up, showing up and playing bingo for, for a night. Um, the photo that's shown here, students are at May Madness, which is our um, outdoor festival that takes place right before uh, finals week. So it's kind of a, a last hurrah. It's your opportunity to kind of unwind and relax before taking your finals. Um, and there's an outdoor festival with live music and free giveaways and free food, um, which you know, no one's gonna say no to free food. And um, it kicks off with a crab feast in the, in the dining hall. Um, Maryland is known for their crabs. So obviously we have to have a crab feast for our students. So we, we do that at the beginning of May Madness and then the outdoor festival takes place. There's you know, magicians or comedians or a hypnotist will come to campus. And so it's a really good time. Um, and then that, weekend ends with our late night strawberry breakfast. Um, so that's right before finals week starts. The dining hall opens up at 10 o'clock at night. Students line up from the dining hall all the way out to you know the, the quad. Um, and they'll go in and our faculty, our staff, our president, everyone's in there serving breakfast um, to, to students. So it's kind of their peace offering before giving students a final exam. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's a really good event. Again, it's meant to kind of just break up the studying and everything that's going on for, for finals week. Um, but a lot of traditions. We are a very tradition rich school. Um, as I said, we were founded in 1893. So we're over 125 years old um, at this point. So we've been around for a while. We have a lot of traditions, especially from back when we were a women's college um, that have continued on throughout Hood's, Hood's existence. Um, so we take pride in a lot of those traditions and it's something that a lot of students and faculty and staff do really love about the college. Um, it brings the community closer together. It brings you closer to alumni as well. Um, so it's, it's a really good opportunity for um, students to, to get that connection on campus. Okay, so athletics. Um, 
we have a listing of all of our athletic programs here um, that we have on campus. So the ones listed are all varsity sports um, and then club sports are listed over there as well. Um, we do have a, an intramural sports program uh, and it cycles through. So it cycles through a rotation of different things based on student interest. So it might be 3v3, 3v3 basketball or flag football or volleyball, um, soccer, uh, different things like that. They'll, they'll cycle through all of those. Um, I know they did um, spike ball as well. So, uh, you know, just any kind of game based on student interest. If you're more interested in kind of staying active and socializing in that aspect of athletics, you can do that through uh, intramural sports on campus. Um, we are division three, so we do not have any kind of athletic scholarships available for students on campus. Um, but that being said, we're in the middle of middle Atlantic conference. So uh, a lot of the schools in our conference are also in the state of Pennsylvania, almost all of them are. Um, so a lot of schools in the Philadelphia area and that region. So nothing is too far away. Um, if you are interested in athletics and worried about, you know, missing a lot of class because of travel and things like that, that's not gonna be the case at the division three level. Um, it's a really good opportunity for students to balance their academics with their athletics. Um, so a lot of our student athletes are very successful on campus because they are placing their academic academics first um, and the coaches get that. You're still gonna be a part of a competitive team, a very competitive conference, um, but at the same time, everyone's under the same uh, impression that you're going to be putting your academics first um, and making sure that you're on top of your classes before you know, being involved with athletics. Um, if you do have any athletics related questions or wanna get in contact with any coaches, hoodathletics.com has a lot of the um, contact information for coaches. You can also fill out a prospect questionnaire if you're interested in athletics. It'll ask for a number of, you know, things, information about you um, and your sport. And if you have any you know, footage to send to coaches, um, you're able to do that through the website and then coaches can get in contact with you that way if you want to be recruited for any of these, these programs on campus. Um, our eSports program, which is a club team currently, is actually being elevated to the varsity level this year. Um, so that's very exciting for eSports. So if you're interested in gaming or anything like that, then you can get involved with that program as well. All right, so looking at the application process, um, students are able to apply to Hood anytime after August 1st of their senior year in high school. So any seniors, you can apply now. Um, juniors, if you are um, involved in you know, this college search process now and wanna get a head start, you can apply before your, your uh, classes even start your senior year. Um, Hood.edu slash apply has all the information on the application process and how to fill that out. Um, we do not have any application fee associated with, you know, applying to Hood. Um, so it's free to apply. You can do it through our website or through the common application if you're filling that out. Um, so it's very easy to apply as well. Um, and then we operate on a rolling admission timeline. So there's no hard set dates or anything that we need things by. It's a very simple process. Um, you just submit your application and then all we need in addition to that is a transcript from your high school. So once you've submitted those two things, it takes about two to three weeks to get a decision back in the mail from us. So it's a quick turnaround. You'll have all scholarship information, all additional information that you might need regarding the admission process in your acceptance letter. Um, so for that, you know, we're getting everything out to you as soon as it's ready. So you don't have to wait for it. Um, we know senior year, there's tons of things you're worried about, tons of things you're working on and juggling at the same time. And we don't want applying to college to be a huge hurdle for you. Um, so we do not require any letters of recommendation from anybody. Um, obviously, we'll be more than happy to read those if you want to send them in from a teacher, guidance counselor, coach, boss, you know, anyone that's significant to you, um, you're able to send a letter of recommendation in to us. Additionally, um, I know a lot of schools are going test optional for this year. We have actually been test optional for the past five years. So we do not require SAT or ACT scores for admission to the college or uh, scholarships or anything along those lines. Um, again, if you want to send them in, by all means, you can do so, but you're not going to be penalized for not sending them in. We think that a transcript, which shows three years of an academic record, is a better reflection of your academic ability and you know, trends and grades and everything like that than a test that you're sitting and taking for three hours on a Sunday. Um, so, you know, we're able to see a lot more through, through your transcript. Um, and then the last thing is to keep in touch with your admission counselor. So I work with all students coming from the state of Pennsylvania. Um, 
So if you have any questions kind of throughout your whole admission process and you know, you're not sure who to get in contact with or anything like that, you're able to reach out to me. My contact information is listed on this slide here. So you can shoot me an email, give me a phone call, um, and I'd be happy to help you, whether that's answering questions that you might have or connecting you with someone on campus that can answer any questions. Um, really, I think my main job is to get you connected with the people on campus that know the information best. Um, so I'm happy to do that for you, happy to get you to sign up for a visit. Um, so if you're you know, viewing this and interested in, in learning a little bit more about Hood, seeing a lot of our facilities, um, you know, we're not far from, from Pennsylvania. So we're able to you know, accommodate you and guests on campus. You can go to hood.edu slash visit, and that will pull up a calendar of all the available visits that we have on campus. Um, we are allowing on-campus visitors, but we also are doing virtual visits if you feel more comfortable doing that. Um, so it's similar to this over a Zoom platform where you have the opportunity to see campus through a virtual tour um, and then meet with an admission counselor and sit down and talk with us. Um, we really like to get to know the students that are interested in Hood and looking at schools like Hood um, and getting to know more about you. Um, these presentations are great for you to get to know more about Hood, um, but for us, we wanna know what you're interested in, what you're passionate about, what you're looking for in a school um, and seeing if Hood would be a good fit for you based on all of that. So that's what we really want to do um, with these virtual visits and these opportunities for students to get to interact with campus. So definitely take advantage of those. Reach out to me if you have any questions about signing up for that um, or registering for any visits. But that is pretty much everything that I have for everybody. If anyone has any questions, you can feel free to put those in the Q&A um, and I'd be happy to answer those. But if not, and it doesn't look like we have any questions, I will pass it on back to the facilitator um, and I will stop sharing my screen as well. But yes, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm again, happy to get in contact with you. Please let me know if, if any questions do come up um, and you know, feel free to, to reach out. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks for such yeah. a great session. And to all of our attendees, thank you for joining us today. When you exit this, um, this session, you will be asked to fill out a quick survey, just a quick four question survey. So if you could fill that out, that'd be much appreciated. And just again, you can sign up for more sessions via pacac.org slash virtual. All recordings will be available in the next couple of days. So thank you so much, Ryan, and thank you all for joining us today. All right, thank you so much.